Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can replace your existing mediator implementation with one that is significantly faster and more memory efficient without actually changing the implementation itself. This is also true if you just want to use mediator and you haven't really implemented it yet and you want to go with a very performant version right out of the get-go. Mediator does get some criticism because of its performance so we're going to see how the solution I'm going to show you addresses that. If you like that of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the sub notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsas.com. Okay so let me show you what I have here. I've made the simple application which is the same weather API that you get out of the box and I'm using Mediator, so I have my controller over here. As you can see, I'm injecting my iMediator instance. And if you don't know what Mediator is, I do have many videos on the topic, so you can go back, check the channel, and then come back here. And then I have a weather endpoint, and I'm sending a weather request over here, and then I'm returning OK when I get the weather. So if I go ahead and I quickly run this API, then I'm going to go into Postman and call that endpoint. And as you can see, I get the weather back. And the first load takes some time and any subsequent one is just very, very fast. And the way the flow works, and actually let's just debug this, is you can see the breakpoint here on the controller level. And then I'll go back to Postman, call that, and then I can debug the application. So I have this weather forecast request, which I'm caching an instance of because it doesn't really have any parameters. So there is no point for me to keep newing up an object because this is a record, which is a reference type, meaning it will be allocated on the heap every single time. So what I'm doing is I'm sending that over there. Now, one of the biggest problems with Mediator as well is that if I do step into this code, because the logic is that it goes and finds the appropriate handler for this request, in this case, this handler over here, then without a breakpoint in the handler, you can't really step into the method. So for that reason, I'm putting a breakpoint here. And then as you can see, I'm hitting it and I'm returning the result, which is the same logic as you have in the template. It generates five weather forecasts and then returns them back. And then it just maps it into an OK result. And that's it. I'm getting it back here. And fundamentally, that's all there is to it. Now, you have to understand how Mediator works to understand what the shortcomings might be. For example, this add Mediator call over here, which is what we're using to find all the handlers and register them. As you can see Mediator, and I'm going to just step into everything here. As you can see over here, it's going to try and assembly scan. This is why you're passing down this type or assembly, because it's going to scan assemblies to find all the handlers, processors, request processors, post and pre, and then exceptional handlers and actions. It's going to scan those assemblies, try to run some reflection, and then generate types and add them into your DI container. And then it's going to store them into what is effectively a dictionary and try to instantiate them, keep them in memory, and then give them back as your requests come in. So there's quite a bit of reflection, quite a bit of work. Now, this type of reflection is very optimized. It's not the bad type of reflection. And that's why most people are okay with using Mediator. However, since .NET 5, we got an amazing feature that can actually improve on this. And that is source generation. There is this NuGet package over here created by Martin Othmar. Sorry for butchering your name. And it actually implements the exact same API and interface as Mediator, but in a source generated fashion. So we can actually use this as effectively a drop in replacement, and it still has all the functionalities that Mediator has. For example, the new streaming functionality, it has it. You want to use query handlers, command handlers, you have all that. You want to use things like pipelines, this supports them. So you can effectively replace what you have with this. And just to show you how easy it is to use, I'm going to create a second application using that source generated version of Mediator and migrate this application. But before I do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video the ABP.io framework. The ABP framework is an open source platform that you can use to create modern web applications following the latest best practices and conventions of software development. It supports multiple architectures from microservices to modular systems and from domain-driven design to multi-tenant applications. It provides ready solutions for problems such as authentication and authorization, and you can either use the Getting Started Web Wizard or the ABP CLI tool to create .NET projects exactly how you want them. They also provide commercial solutions with access to 
extra modules, themes, and templates alongside premium support for enterprise users. It is a complete package that solves most of the problems you will encounter while building a system out of the box. To find out more about ABP, check the link in the description and stay tuned in the last week of November for a massive Black Friday discount on ABP commercial licenses. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to just copy this name and I'm going to create a new project. This will still be a web project and the only difference will be the name. So I'm going to call that fastermediator.mediator with an O, not with an R, and then .api. And I'm going to create that. And then I'm just going to copy the exact code I have here. So the same weather folder will be moved here. So I'm deleting the old controllers. I'm deleting this and I'm migrating this over here. I'm going to go ahead and install two packages on this project over here. The first one will be mediator.sourcegenerator. And I'm going to use the pre-release version to use the latest RC. So I'm going to install that over here. And then I'm also going to add the mediator.abstractions package. I'm going to go ahead and install that over here. And that's it. And now all I need to do is go ahead and replace first the namespaces. So fix them to match the new name. And then the same code works here. So I just imported mediator, the same iMediator. Then I can go here and use the same request handler. Nothing changed. I can go back to the request and import that request. Same thing. And the only thing that will change in the implementation here is that this is now a value task. It is not a task, which can be very handy if you want to optimize how your handler performs. And the rest is still the same. Nothing changed. Now, to register mediator, you have two options. The first one is to go here and say builder.services.add mediator. And you can leave it there and this will work. However, at this point, I should point out that this mediator will register the iMediator interface implementation as a singleton by default, while Jimmy's approach will register it as a transient. This can make a difference in performance. However, when we do run the benchmarks, I will cover this topic as well in depth. Now, this method also supports settings. So if I wanted to change things like the namespace of the source generated code or the service lifetime, and I wanted to make that scoped, singleton or transient, I would do it here. I'm just going to leave it as it is by default, just to show you how easy it is. Now, that's one of the ways you can do this. The other way would be to have something like this, where you have a mediator config file, and you can delete everything and say that you have an assembly level attribute called the mediator options. And in here, you can specify the same thing. So for example, the namespace that you want, that this is created in a specific namespace or the service lifetime. And this will do the same registration as the add mediator. So it's a either or, you don't do both. I'm just going to delete this one over here. I don't need it. I'm going to try to keep the same experience as with Jimmy's approach. So have this call over here. And now all I'm going to do is just run this new mediator approach. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, the service is running, same endpoints, same everything. And now I'm calling it and it is returning the same thing. And I'm going to go ahead actually and debug it. So let's go ahead and add a breakpoint here and see what's going on and go back in Postman and run it. As you can see, I hit the same breakpoint. And now this mediator is this source generated mediator implementation. If I go in the code, which I can see here, you will see that instead of using reflection or dictionary lookups, it will actually generate a send method over here that has this weather forecast object in a switch. So it will switch between the items, which is very, very fast, faster than a dictionary lookup. And they will try to do some pretty advanced stuff to get back the appropriate handler and return it. And the same approach in debugging works unless you enable uh, debugging into external sources. So you can go in here and you still step in the code and you can get the result back. And then that result is being returned over here and enumerated in the response. So this is a very nice and frictionless approach to implementing the exact same thing, but in a more performant way. And I want to show you how more performant it actually is. Now, performance is contextual and it means different things for different people. However, if you really, really care about it, but you still want to use Mediator, I'm going to show you how performance changes if you use a source generated version. So I just added two projects in the solution. The first one is this one over here, the one using the source generated Mediator approach. And the other one is using uh, Jimmy's mediator approach. It's the same code, but using the two different implementations. And I'm going to use this newly added benchmarks project, which all it really does is it runs these benchmarks over here. And all I'm really doing is I'm importing these two projects. I'm referring to them in here. And then I'm creating an iMediator instance, which in both cases obviously is a singleton because it's reused in here using the default registration of each package. When you see mediator without an O, it is the old approach. And when you see mediator, the full name, it is the new approach. 
So I have the implementations over here, and then I have these two benchmarks. One will use its respective instance and send a request and get a request back, and the other one will do the same over here. So all I'm going to do is make sure that this is marked as release mode, and then I'm going to select the benchmark project, and I'm going to run it. So let's see what's the performance delta between the two actions. And I intentionally chose something that does some work, because if I show you the most stripped down version, obviously you're going to see a difference, but how much does that reflect the real world when you do some sort of computing in the two handlers? So that's what I want to show you here. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, with a single iMediator instance, Mediator, the old version, takes twice as much as the new version. However, the biggest difference here is how much memory is allocated. So obviously both things will allocate some memory on the heap because both return a task and both have an array created in them with a few fields. But you can see the delta between the two things that do the exact same work. One only does it in half the time and one sixth of the memory, which is quite the difference. 1.5 kilobytes per request on your API will actually make a difference in API pressure. Now, obviously, things can get load leveled as you do more intense work and you add some API requests or database calls into your requests. However, this shows that if you really do care about this type of optimization and performance, this will give you not only a faster approach, but also a way more efficient approach. And you know how it is in this channel. We do support open source. So I'm going to put a link in the description to the new source generated mediator approach. And you can go ahead and give it a star on GitHub. It really means a lot to those creators. And it is actually an active project, which I really do appreciate. But what do you think? Would you use something like this? Or are you okay with using the old mediator with the performance that it has and the memory allocations that it has? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.